Oh uh, yeah, I'd say it's about time to change these CV axle boots. It's a pretty common problem here on the 500 de Barths. I already have the car jacked up and the wheel removed, so let's get to taking all this other stuff off. First couple of easy things to do, take the brake lines out of their little socket here. Pops out just like that. And this is for the wheel speed sensor. Comes loose like that. Now we gotta take the wheel speed sensor off. It's a T30 Torx. This little bolt comes out and then the wheel speed sensor just kind of pops up out of there. A little wiggle and it comes right out. And we just tuck it up so it's not in our way. It really helps to PB blaster all these bolts because they tend to stick a lot. I actually had these off uh, just a month or two ago, so hopefully they're not gonna be like super stuck, but uh, we'll see. Now we gotta take the caliper off. This two 13 millimeter bolts, top and bottom. And I like to use a caliper hanging hook just to get them out of the way. All right, before we get too far taking other things off, we're gonna wanna get these axle nut off. And as you can see here, the axle nut is actually staked onto the axle. You're gonna want a cheap sacrificial screwdriver for this part because the only way I've found to really be able to get the staking out is to drive a screwdriver underneath the staking and then prise it out. It also helps to have two screwdrivers. That way, like once you get it started, you put the other one on the bottom, give the top one more leverage and then you just hammer it in until it, you can see the staking kind of raises up to where it'll get out of the keyway. Then once you get that done, you flip it over and do it again on this side. And once you have the staking raised up on both sides, just like that, you're ready to take this nut off. All right, to keep this thing from spinning, take your sacrificial screwdriver and jam it in your rotor and press it up against the caliper bracket here. And that'll keep this thing from rotating on you when you're trying to get this nut off. Now these nuts are 36 millimeter and you have to use a thin wall socket on them because you can't get a thick socket like that deep in there to get it off. These things are put on with 229 foot pounds of torque. I don't know if this electric impact is going to get it off. I know air impacts will get it off no problem, but let's see if this works. There we go. Now you are gonna need a new axle nut. These aren't reusable because of the staking. And of course you can find these at bookautoworks.com. I'll leave a link for them down in the description below. And whenever you go to my website, you'll notice that I have the part numbers for everything I have listed. So if I'm out of stock, I mean, even if you don't wanna buy from me or whatever, just go look up the part number on the website and go look it up somewhere else. I'm just here to help you guys. So that doesn't bother me one bit. Now we gotta get the strut bolts out. The nut side is a 17 millimeter and the bolt side is a 15 millimeter. The strut bolts are always a pain. You always have to wait on them to get them out. And like I said, I just had these out not too long ago, so these are relatively not stuck compared to most of them. Once the hub is free from the strut, it drops down and you can usually pull the axle out. Sometimes it takes like some tapping from the front. But you can see the axle just comes all the way out of the hub like that. Now we got to get the nastiness of this old boot off and we can take the axle all the way off. Since the old boot is trashy anyway, I got in there with a razor knife and just made a couple slices so I could go ahead and pull the axle out of it. I'll probably have to get in there with diagonal cutters to get the old band off and be able to completely remove that boot. See this little bastard right here? I'm going to grab it with the diagonal cutters and just work it back and forth until the clamp breaks. Not too hard. And this nasty thing should pop right off. You want to clean all the old grease out of the tripod bearing cup here. Not only because it's been become contaminated from the boot being open with, you know, water and dirt and stuff, but you also want to check the sides of your tripod bearing cup to make sure there's no like weird divots or anything. If you see a little bit of wear marks, like that's okay. But if you can actually feel it with your finger, then you're gonna to have to replace the bearing cup as well. And these things are not cheap. They're also kind of hard to find. But fortunately, this one feels pretty good. And you can see on here where the all the old grease slung out of it. <laughs> Freaking nasty. All right, now let's turn our attention to the axle. We gotta take the tripod bearing off here in order to get the new boots onto the axle. And we're gonna replace this tripod bearing as well while we're at it. Wipe off some of this old grease and we can reveal the snap ring right here. Easy peasy taking this off. Just grab your snap ring pliers and there you go. 
And be sure you don't lose this because if this goes pinging off somewhere, you're going to have a hard time finding a new one. Now these tripod bearings, they can be kind of tricky. I've seen some where they just slide right off the shaft and I've had others that were very seriously stuck. And this one seems to be kind of on the stuck variety. So I'm going to go get the three jaw pullers and get it off that way. This little three jaw puller works perfect for pulling these tripod bearings off. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. This one actually came off pretty darn easy. I've had these things way more stuck than that. Now we need to get the other part of the torn boot off. Like sometimes you can get under the edge of these clamps and, and pull them up. But I also find that grabbing it by the little, the pinch part and just like twisting it, they tend to come off pretty easy. Once the clamp is gone, it just slides off. And the hub side boot looks like it's in good shape, but we're gonna go ahead and replace it anyway. The kit comes with both the hub side and the uh, transmission side. So, you know, why not replace both? Comes right off. And then you gotta slide the boot all the way off the shaft. And you're gonna make a huge mess too. So make sure you do it on something that'll catch the mess. Axle grease is nasty. So here's the boot kit I like to use. You can see the part number right here, and I'll leave a link for it in the description below. But I kind of want to point out something about these boots. As you can see, it comes with plenty of grease packets, and it comes with clamps for you. But what I really want you to see is how the tripod bearing side has these little dimples that fit the scallops of the tripod bearing cup. And you notice like the original boot has those dimples too. I've seen some boot kits that don't have that. They're just flat. And I'm sure those things work okay, but I just really prefer to have the ones that, that fit the, the scallops in the tripod bearing cup. And also you notice there's two different sizes. The larger one goes to the hub side and this side goes to the tripod bearing, obviously. I mean, yeah. But you gotta put the hub side on first. So slide that onto the shaft. The grease packets are pretty straightforward. You just like click the tip off of one side and you just squeeze it in into the new new boot and you want to put a whole grease packet in each boot and the way these clamps work they have these little tabs that hook into each other like that and then once you slide the clamp onto the boot you'll use this tool right here it has these jaws right here you can see it like that and they pinch up on this part right here and tighten up the boot and then you just do the same thing with the small side you want to push it up a little bit to where it sits in the, the groove on the axle. All right, now that I have both boots on and I only have the tripod bearing boot tightened on the shaft side, this one's still loose because, you know, obviously we have to put it up on the bearing cup. But here's the tripod bearing. And this should just slip on without any trouble. You might have to give it some gentle taps. But as soon as you can see the snap ring, you can go ahead and put your snap ring back on. And that goes on easy peasy. Now we gotta fill this cup up with another package of grease and the more tricky part is getting it up into the bearing cup. So let's go do that. All right, now this end of the axle needs to get put up into the bearing cup and then the clamp cinched up around it all without spilling out too much grease. So this part right here is why you need these side squeezing pliers for the, the band clamps. I'll leave a link for these guys down in the description below, but yeah, you have to get in here with not a whole lot of room to work. Squeeze this mother effort down. And there you go, boots are replaced. Now we gotta get this back in the hub here. I'm gonna need two hands for this because you gotta thread this thing into the hub while you lift it up. Oh, and don't forget to grab the new axle nut too. Once you have your shaft in far enough to get a few threads on the nut in, you can go ahead and tighten it up. All right, I should have told you guys earlier to undo the sway bar link that helps you move this thing around a whole lot easier. So make sure you undo that first before you start taking off everything else. But now you got to get this lifted back up and put in, put the bolts in for the strut. All right, now that everything's all buttoned up, we got to torque this thing down to 229 foot pounds. It's gonna pop. Just like that. That's a lot. Now we have to stake the nut 
just like the other one was staked. So normally to stake a nut like this, you would just take a cold chisel and put on here just like that and give it a whack with a hammer. But since this car has wheel spacers on it, it's hard to get the chisel in there and these bolts holding the spacers on are stripped and I'm not gonna try and spend time trying to get those out. So I'm just gonna have to like try to stake it the best I can. All right, well, that's all there is to it. The passenger side is just like the driver side over here, as long as you're doing just the boots. If for some reason you have to take the tripod bearing cups out, it's a little bit different. The one on this side is just a short little shaft that goes into the transmission. And on the passenger side, it's an intermediate shaft. But I think most of you guys are just gonna be replacing only the tripod bearings and the boots. So yeah, that'll do it. Well, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.